in my May update I talked about how in April I had read five books in five weeks and I wanted to make kind of a review of what those books were and what I thought about them because four of those books I really liked and the one that I didn't like I have a lot, a lot to say about. The first book two books that I read were actually rereads for me. Most of you probably know of The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, probably mostly The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, and The Voyage of the Dawn Treader because those three were made into films recently. I reread the first two books in the series, which are The Magician's Nephew and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Both of those books leave me in tears. They are so beautiful, so wonderful. They're children's books, so it's nothing too lofty for you to understand. Everything is very simple, but the writing is so beautiful. And what's communicated in those stories is just, it, it brings me to tears. C.S. Lewis wrote all of the stories taking place in the land of Narnia, and then he went back to the beginning and wrote a prologue. It talks about the origins of Narnia, the first king queen to rule over Narnia, uh, the origins of the white witch, and also how the magic wardrobe came into existence. It is one of my favorite in this series. It's uh, super great. If you haven't read those two books, they're pretty quick reads. If you aren't a kid, you're still gonna love it. Highly, highly suggested. The second book I read this month I do not have because I borrowed it from the library from the daycare that I used to work at. I was like, this looks like some young reader's fantasy and I am all about that. So I picked it up and that was my mistake. My curiosity was satisfied, but at what cost? The book is entitled The Dark Woods Divide. It is the first book in the Land of Elyon series. Look, don't get me wrong. There were so many things in the book that I was like, this is super interesting. It talks about the effects of like deforestation and colonization and like how that kind of wreaks havoc on the environment. That was like kind of one theme. Another theme was like corruption. Another theme was like uh, animal rights. It had all these super awesome things that were just like passed right on by. I was like, you could have had a great discussion that really brought something deep and wonderful to these stories, but you didn't. Every, like, there were so many things that were unjustified. So many characters that it was like, you have zero motivation. Why? Why are you doing these things? Why are you sneaking around? No one said that what they just talked to you about was a secret, so why are you pretending like it's a secret? The only reason why the mean character that had like a grudge against the main character was mean is because you were supposed to think he's the bad guy. There has to be more motivation than that. There has to be some solid character development. There was none. You have to justify it. If you're gonna make someone evil, you gotta justify that. It made me so angry as I was reading it. Like, I would read a chapter and I'd just be like, what? If I were five, or I were 10, or if I were even 12, that book would have been totally okay. I would have read it, I probably would have loved it. I'd be like, oh my goodness, she can talk to animals. There's, there's like a bear who's a king of the forest and like she's throwing it down with all these men. This girl's like girl power, it's awesome, right? Except there's no depth to the story. There's no depth. And I'm just like, come on, dude, it's a whole series. You're an author. I don't wanna just read a book when I'm 12 and then never read it again. These are children's books. I am 20, how old am I? I'm 23. And I'm still reading these and getting new things out of it. Just because it's a children's book doesn't mean it has to suck or only be good when you're 12. Children's books should keep on giving. Which brings me to another children's book that I read. This book, Ruby Holler. It is such an easy read. I read it in like three hours. And it's, how, how many pages is this? Three, it's like 310 pages. Granted, the text in this book is pretty big. I don't know if you can see. It's pretty big. So it was such an easy read, and I'm not that fast of a reader. This is a children's book, or like a young reader's novel. It was so good. This was a book that I could have read when I was 10. I would have loved it. I read it now as a 23-year-old. I love it. It's not... The Chronicles of Narnia, which like blows my mind every time I read it, but it's still really good. It is about two orphans who have grown up, who are, I think they're 13, 
They are called the Trouble Twins. They live in an orphanage. Um, they've been abused essentially their entire lives. Um, and then there's this old couple named Tiller and Sari, and they essentially take in the kids for the summer. And it's just a story about how the love of Tiller and Sari towards these orphans who have known only abuse and neglect transforms their lives. There's nothing that's unjustified in here. Um, the ending, I read it and I started crying. And then I was thinking about it and I started crying again. I love it. It's a beautiful ending to the story. This book does not shy away from hard themes. It doesn't shy away from neglect or abuse or death or loss. Like it bases those things in a very sophisticated way where it's not, it's not a heavy book. You don't walk away feeling weighed down by it. You walk away feeling lifted up and encouraged, which is beautiful for a book, a, one, a children's book, and two, a book that's dealing with such hard and heavy themes. Really sweet book. I think anyone at any age would love this book. Oh, and then finally, the last book that I read. You guys, I am so late to the game with this one. It's not a children's book, it's a young adult book. It's The Maze Runner. Okay, I have been avoiding seeing the movie because I wanted to read the book before I saw the movie. This book was so good. I think this book has my favorite ending of all time. Of all time. This one, oh my goodness. It is, if you haven't seen the movie, if you haven't read the book, it's kind of like a dystopian uh, style novel, except the, this whole book takes place within um, a maze, essentially. There are people called runners, um, and they look and search for a way out of this maze. And they know they're being watched by someone, they know they've been placed there by someone, they call them the creators, and so they're trying to figure out a way to get out, um, and a way to figure out who's doing this to them, why they're doing it. I got to the last chapter, read it, and I was like, wow, like, I'm excited to see what happens next. This is like so cool. This is amazing. I loved it. And then I read the epilogue and I was like, what? What? What is going on? Oh my gosh. This book, I literally started screaming. I was like, what is going on? It was amazing. It was the biggest cliffhanger. It throws you for the biggest loop of your life. I was like, I could not, I could not believe it. I still cannot believe it. I really need to get the second book. I haven't gotten it yet. It blew my freaking mind. Look, I may be hyping it a lot, but just know it is my favorite ending of all time thus far. OMG. <laughs> OMG, you guys. <sighs> this book was so good. It was so good. I loved it so much. You guys, you should read this. If you have not read this book, you need to read it. If there are any two things you got out of this book, out of uh, this video, one, don't read Dark Hills Divide. Two, read The Maze Runner. That's it. Hope you guys have a great day. I have nothing else to say. Everything that need needed to have been said has been said. Thank you all so much for watching. Have you read any of those books? Let me know. Do you feel the same way I feel? Leave me recommendations of what books I should read down in the comments below. I would love to know because I'm trying to read a book a week. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all very soon. Bye! Also, I've been looking at my analytics and a lot of you people watching this have not subscribed. In fact, 75% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So like, what are you waiting for? You know, there's so much good stuff on this channel, if I do say so myself. I mean, you can feel free to disagree, but if you're watching, then you know what? You could really help us out by subscribing. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.